Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over this rifle that you see in my hands right here and that you've seen on the channel for years now. I think I picked this one up in 2015 so we have a ton of rounds for this thing and a ton of different configurations. I have a ton of video with it on multiple hard drives that I probably won't roll into this video because it's just not necessary but take my word on it there are a ton of videos um, with this rifle in it on the channel and you guys can check those out should you choose to do so. But what we're going to do today is just a dedicated review of the rifle because I've done a few on it. I did a uh, cleaning lubrication video which we'll put a link down below for that. I also did a SCAR shootout video, which leads me to my next point, right? So the SCAR rifle series, um, where did it come from? How did it come to be? So there was a competition uh, in the early 2000s. It took a few years to kind of work itself out, but SOCOM wanted their own rifle and they didn't want to have to deal with Big Army um, in terms of the procurement process. They were having some issues with M4s and um, basically they were looking for their own weapon system that could be a little bit more durable, a little bit more accurate, be run a little bit harder and still work well. So a bunch of different rifles were submitted. Uh, this was one of them and then Colt submitted their piston gun, which uh, I also did a review of, or not a review of rather, but a comparison with this gun. I did the shootout. I believe that was the SCAR Type C is what it was called. And I did an accuracy video with both rifles. Both rifles shot really well, but this particular one here um, shot sub MOA, I think with three of the four loads that we put through it with a four powered optic on there. So in terms of accuracy, this rifle is phenomenal in that regard. So I will not be doing an accuracy uh, portion of this video simply because it's already done. You guys can go check it out there and see how it did. Uh, so we're trying to save a little bit of time there for you guys. But this rifle here came out of that competition. Uh, this one, generally speaking, is referred to as the SCAR Type S or the SCAR Lite. Um, and then also the SCAR 17, which was a 308 or actually rather 7.62 by 5.1 chambered uh, rifle was also uh, born of that competition and saw a lot of military use. The SCAR-17 even today is still seeing military use. This one here saw some limited use. I'm not sure how much it's still out there um, in use, but I'm sure some Navy units do still have them because they purchased the majority of them. But what we're going to do next is let the dogs take a look at it, and then we're going to get into all the different details of this rifle. So it's not all good, it's not all bad, but at the end we'll let you know what we think of it overall. We'll start out here towards the muzzle and work our way back. We do have half by 28 threads on there, so any of your standard AR-15 on muzzle devices or suppressor mounts, things like that, will work just fine. Now it does come with this PWS muzzle brake. Now I can tell you it's an extremely effective muzzle brake, but it is loud and has a ton of concussion, honestly. I have no idea why FN would ever go with this um, on this rifle. It kind of makes sense to have a break on a 308 uh, due to the recoil and pulse differences, but this is a relatively smooth, soft shooting gun. So for me, um, even if I wasn't going to run a suppressor, I would definitely take this off and put like an A2 on there just to reduce the concussion and blast personally. So moving on back, we do have a 1 in 7 in twist chrome wine barrel. It is cold hammer forged by FN and uh, the accuracy on these rifles is phenomenal like we mentioned earlier. So uh, for the profile of the barrel it's kind of surprising. It is fully free floated so nothing here on the handguard is going to touch it. So that of course does help um, but it's a relatively lightweight profile. So for the profile of the barrel it shoots really, really well in my opinion, so I uh, can't complain too much about that. We'll move on back here to the gas block. If you search around the internet for this rifle, you'll find some uh, articles and uh, posts by FN themselves, in fact, uh, talking about suppressor use on these rifles. So basically, I'll roll on the screenshots here so you guys can see what it says in the manual, but uh, FN has told some folks that they don't cover these rifles if you shoot them suppressed. Now, whether or not they actually would warranty them, I don't know. 
I would imagine, generally speaking, they would, but I've heard otherwise. Um, so who knows out there? But one thing I will tell you is that it does have a suppressor setting. We have it right here at the uh, 10 o'clock position. And uh, if you want to set it to normal operations, you just rotate it over, if I can do so, there you go, into the 12 o'clock position. And that's how you would run it under normal firing without any sort of uh, suppressor or anything on there. Um, but it does have the setting. So why they would be upset about folks using the suppressor setting, I have no idea. The front sight as well as the rear sight on this rifle are phenomenal in my opinion. It has some of the best iron sights of any rifle out there on the market, so we'll certainly give it credit for that. But as you guys can see, uh, the front sight there has that hood over it, and looking in there, you guys can see it is elevation adjustable. So if you want to uh, set your elevation with that, you certainly can do so. And we'll get into the rear sight a little bit here, um, a little bit more rather here in just a second, but it's also windage adjustable, which is pretty cool. And generally speaking, you just don't see it on a lot of modern rifles. So it has a lot of adjustability there for you to set the rifle up as you see fit. When you're running optics and you want that front sight down, it's pretty easy to do. You can just kind of push up here on this little button and it does fold forward and lock into place. It's pretty secure there. Wouldn't have to worry about it coming out of place. We do have uh, four rails on there. Number one, of course, is integral to the upper receiver and runs the whole length of it. Then we have three here at the three, six, and nine o'clock positions. Those are, of course, 19, 13 spec rails, and they're relatively short by today's standards, but there are aftermarket accessories for these. If you want to replace this with some of those, you certainly can do so. Um, but that is the configuration it comes in from the factory. Also up front, we do have these two sling attachment points on both sides of the rifles. They also have some sling attachment points back here on the rear, again, on both sides of the rifle. So you can uh, set it up in a few different ways. However, on the right side, we only have one sling attachment point. Of course, that's because the stock folds, which we'll show you in a little bit more detail here in a second. And we have two different points there on the left side along the top of the receiver. You guys can see it does have the T markings all the way through for you guys who want to mark your optics location, which I do recommend for serious use guns. And uh, below that, we do have the charging handle. Now this here is one of the uh, controversial uh, things about this rifle. It is reciprocating. So if you're, uh, say, firing and you have your thumb up there, you're probably only gonna do it once because it's going to bite you you're going to have a malfunction um, but this was requested uh, by SOCOM during the development of this rifle to have a reciprocating charging handle. It also uh, can be on the right side like we have it here or also on the left side, which is where most folks are probably going to keep it. I just put it on for the video review on that side. But as you guys can see there, um, there is no forward assist or charging handle or anything like that besides this. This does it all. It runs the action. And if you needed to bump it forward for whatever reason, you also could do so by just hitting the lever. The safety as well as the magazine release here on the rifle are ambidextrous. The bolt release is not though. So it's just something to keep in mind. Uh, as you look here on the right side of the receiver, that would be, of course, the mag release. We do have a shell deflector here for you lefties firing it. You don't have to worry about getting brass in your face. So that certainly is nice. The rear sight this rifle comes with is phenomenal. It's absolutely one of the best iron sights I've ever seen. And in fact, I wish FN would release this for AR-15s. Uh, so there's a ton going on here. And anybody who's familiar with the MG42 machine gun, it's gonna look very similar to you. And my guess is that's not a coincidence. So we do have the windage markers here on the sides. Of course, each click is uh, equivalent to one MOA. And then it is adjustable for elevation, just like uh, the rear or the front sight rather, but this one here correlates to your engagement distances, right? So you'll see on the bottom there, it does have the two and then each click, when you click it up, if I'm quiet, you might be able to hear it through the mic. Each one of those clicks is equivalent to 1.5 MOA. And of course you can set it so that it works um, with the distances that are uh, labeled on the site. And it does have a dual aperture as well. So if you want to run a little bit larger for nighttime operations or for maybe CQB type operations, you can do so. And uh, you can flip it down either way. So you can flip it down on the small aperture or on the big aperture, it locks into place. Very sturdy. Um, like I said, it's, it's absolutely one of the best uh, iron sights out there on the market. After going over one of the better features of the rifle, we're gonna get into one that people really, generally speaking, don't like, and that's the stock. Now, from a function perspective, I really like it on the 16. On the 17, it does have some problems. I've seen them personally break on the 17. I've never seen that happen on the 16. Um, however, uh, basically, it has a lot of adjustability built into it. It's also a folder to adjust the cheek piece for your, um, say you're using a magnified optic or something like that and you want your head up a little bit that's how you do it you push this button in and it locks up if you want to push it back down you just push in and it does go back down to adjust the length of pull 
this is your button here to do it. It has six different positions, so all the way down collapsed with body armor. It's pretty short. It's relatively equivalent to what you'd see there with the M4 stock all the way collapsed. And then to open it up, you just push down and pull out. Now, it also folds like we talked about earlier. You're going to push this button in order to do so. And uh, just push it in and slide it over, and it will catch and lock there on your shell deflector. So... There you go. You guys could hear it click in there and lock, and it's not flopping around to actually release it. You have to sort of pull down and out, and uh, it does come out like that. And if you want to lock it in place, you got to kind of pop it like so. Now we're going to field strip the rifle here, and I want to point out that I do have a full dedicated how to clean and lubricate the SCAR rifles uh, video. If you guys are really interested in the details, we're just going to kind of do a quick overview here. Um, and the first thing we're going to do is push our pin out here up front. The lower receiver here is made of polymer, and one of the criticisms of this gun is that the colors just don't match. Kind of, I think it looks kind of cool, but a lot of people don't. They really don't like that. If that's the case, get the black. It does match. Um, but we'll take our lower out here. And while we have this out, I want to show you an issue that this gun absolutely does have. And you need to be aware of it if you're going to buy it. So um, basically due to this mag release here, it can have issues with PMAGs, uh, Gen 2 specifically. So hopefully my camera will stay in focus here. But it can damage the gun. So basically if you look down right there. Um, with the rounds, even with the rounds in there, you'll see that the bolt release is still in the up position. Now the gun will work like that, it will function, and uh, you won't really have any issues that you'll be able to easily perceive, but it is going to cause wear on there as the carrier comes forward and hits that each time. Um, now it will also eventually uh, wear on your lugs as well. But with the Gen 3 P mags or any other mag out there on the market, actually, that I know of, the only one I know that it's an issue with is the Gen 2 P mags. You guys can see there, even with rounds in there, it doesn't stick up at all. It sits nice and flush, so no issues there. And the reason for that, just so you guys know, is if you look there on the back of the magazines, and I should also note it does come with a 30 round FN mag that appears to be very good quality. Um, but if you look at the back of all three mags, what you'll notice is. There we go. That we have this V notch here, or U notch rather, and it's very deep and squared off on the other mags. With the Gen 2 P mag, it's sort of a little bit shallow, and that's what's engaging the uh, bolt stop there. Um, so, again, with the Gen 3 P mags, or really any other mags out there, I don't think it's a problem, but it is something there just to point out so you guys are aware of. I do not recommend running the Gen 2 P mags in this gun. Now, uh, we'll also talk about the lower here while we're at it. It does have a decent little mag flare. It certainly could be bigger. It's polymer. I mean, change the molding and uh, a little bit more flare would be good to it. As our A2 grip, you can replace that should you choose to do so with something a little bit more ergonomic if you like it. I certainly will going forward. Um, and then the trigger here, as you guys can see, that thing looks like a military trigger, right? It's big, it's honking, and it feels like a military trigger. So they say um, in the manual that it breaks around 6.25 pounds. Uh, mine absolutely doesn't. It breaks right at 8 pounds, and it's not... Um, conducive to accuracy. However, like I said earlier, the gun is accurate. There's no getting around it. I've shot this thing pretty well. It has a really positive reset, but it breaks heavy, and uh, it's not exactly uh, awesome or anything to write home about. They do make a geisy trigger for it, and uh, that will probably be going in here after this review. But like I said, a lot of mass going forward in terms of a military trigger, having a lot of room in there for dirt and debris to get in. It's a very good in that regard. It's going to be reliable, and I would have some faith in it for sure. Now to take the stock off at this point, we're just going to pull up with the lower out like so. And now we're going to push down on this little button back here, and hopefully we'll get that recoil assembly out like so. There's our spring. And now at this point, we we'll take our bolt, and we can remove our charging handle and just take the bolt and carrier out. And you guys can get a pretty good idea there of how the uh, short stroke gas piston system works. Pretty simple design. You take a look here at the lugs. Um, very similar to an AR-15, but sort of beefed up. So that's not really a coincidence there. Uh, that's a good system that's been used well. Um, it's sort of this hybrid of, in my opinion, just looking at it like the FAL and an AR-15, sort of all in one. But the upper receiver there is made, of course, of all aluminum there. And we do have the M4 feed ramps. So... Uh, good reliability of this rifle. Seriously, I don't think there's been many issues out there in terms of reliability issues with the SCAR-16. It's simply one of the most reliable rifles out there um, in terms of testing and in just my experience as well. So we'll put it back together and move on with the review.
Now that we have the rifle back together, one thing I should note with optics on here, like we have with this Geissele mount and this uh, Primary Arms 1 to 8 scope, is that when you run this charging handle, depending on the optic you're running and depending on where you have it positioned on this rail, it can bite you. So running the charging handle, if you run it hard and you're not aware of what's about to happen, you can cut your hand very easily there on those mounts. I've done it a few times. I've definitely got some bloody knuckles uh, to prove it over the years. It's just something to be aware of. Um, you know, of course, there's techniques to get around it and different mounts and stuff, but um, it is something that's going to catch a lot of new guys off guard. We've covered most of the features of the gun, but there's a few that I still want to touch on before sort of giving my overall opinion on it. Uh, number one is going to be reliability, of course. We always focus on that here, and this gun probably has about 2,000, 2,500 rounds through at this point, so not a ton, uh, but we've had one malfunction that entire time, and that was with the USGI mag. It, the, the follower in there kind of got bind it up and it wasn't feeding so it was totally not a gun related malfunction so other than that we've had zero so can't really do any better than that in terms of reliability and most of those rounds were shot suppressed uh, despite what FN says about the, the gas system here and using suppressors so be that as it may we'll leave it there uh, next thing I want to cover is going to be price I think the MSRP on these is like 3200 3300 Street price is going to be like 2300 2700 and that's when you can find them in stock. Uh, these tend to come in in batches, so when they're here, there's a bunch. And when they're gone, they're gone sometimes for like a year, two years, so they do get scarce at times. And uh, even at that price point, which is saying something, because if they weren't selling at that price point, you know, they'd be available and they'd always be around. So people are buying them, myself included. I think I bought this one in 2015, so I am one of the people that purchased one now. Um, the price is absolutely off-putting to a lot of people, and justifiably so. And I say that because, especially in 5.56, you have such good rifles out there for less than that, right? You have like your BCM, Reckeys, uh, Daniel Defense, uh, B7s, V11s, um, even like a Colt 6920. Those things are coming in sub-1,000 these days, and the other two rifles I mentioned are mid-1,000, you know, so 1,500, somewhere around there. Sometimes even better if you catch a sale. So um, those rifles are exceptional in terms of reliability, accuracy, ergonomics, weight, all that stuff. And that's one thing I need to point out here on this rifle is that unloaded this thing comes in at 7.25 pounds. So it's a little bit heavier than your standard M4 as well. And it actually balances a little bit worse in my opinion. So because of the piston system up here up front and the really lightweight stock that it has, it definitely has sort of a front heavy skew to it that a lot of AR-15s, some do, uh, but a lot of them don't have. So that's also something to keep in mind. Um, aftermarket accessories are out there. Um, they're absolutely available. I will be putting some on this uh, rifle going forward. You guys are going to see them, but they're not as available as they are like for AR-15s or something like that. So there are pros and cons to it for sure. So shooting rise, uh, it shoots awesome. Uh, in my opinion, it's very, very smooth. It has a nice smooth recoil impulse. Some people say they think it's a little bit harder than your standard M4. Uh, I wouldn't say that it's different. One thing that's very different is that when the bolt and carrier go forward, you kind of feel a thunk with it. Uh, if you guys have shot AKs, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. When that bolt goes back in the battery, it kind of like pulls the optic down. Like if you're on target, you'll see your optic dip uh, a little bit sometimes due to that uh, mass going forward and slamming home. And that's also one of the things that makes it hard on optics and also on night vision equipment. So with the 16, you don't really see as many issues, but you do probably see more than you'd see with AR-15s. Uh, with the 17, yeah, that thing eats optics, it eats night vision. So it's just something to keep in mind if you're looking at the weapon system. All in all though, I mean, it's an excellent rifle. Um, no getting around it. Um, when I went out to Battlefield Vegas a few years ago, I basically talked to them about all their different weapon systems and the one that they said even with hundreds of thousands of rounds so you guys can check that video out uh, if you guys haven't checked it out yet um, it's been the least problematic weapon system of all of the ones they have in their shop and that's saying something they have hundreds of different rifles different submachine guns different belt fed machine guns all that stuff and they really do praise this gun um, in terms of uh, being very easy to maintain and just being problem free in general but again that price, that thing's a, it's a beast and it's a lot to overcome, uh, especially with the competition that's out there. So is it for you? I don't know. Um, for most folks, I'd say most people would probably be better off getting, you know, like a BCM or Daniel Defense if you want something uh, very nice that you can rely on in a 5.56 caliber. But some people just want the SCAR because it's cool, it's different, and it is an excellent weapon, no getting around it. So that's 
pretty much it, I guess, for my thoughts. If you guys have any questions, you can always post down below in the comment section. You can also post over at my Facebook page, as always. That's generally speaking the best place to get in touch with me. And uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. If you guys aren't subscribed yet, please go ahead and do so. And I hope to see all of you in the next video.